Good evening and welcome back. Uh, it's Monday night, it's in the know, brought to you by the Racing Post and Coral. And it feels like only yesterday that we were chatting to you about the Ascot card on Saturday afternoon. Uh, and here we are again on the cusp of glorious Goodwood. Albeit the weather is more atrocious than uh, glorious on the, the forecast for the rest of the week. Uh, but that hasn't stopped uh, plenty of horses, in theory, turning up for the opening day tomorrow. Uh, the last count, 104 of them turning up for eight races uh, on the first day uh, on the south coast. Uh, we've got plenty of action to, to get excited about. It'll take a brave man to take on Courage Monomy, that's for sure, in the, the Goodwood Cup. Uh, love them or heart them. We've got plenty of two-year-old races uh, starting off with a vintage tomorrow, of course, uh, and favourite backers will be having sweet dreams if Kinross wins the Lennox. Plenty of uh, other fascinating races as well. Big field handicaps, five furlong sprints all the way through uh, to the, uh, the Chesterfield Cup, of course, which is a uh, cracking race indeed for armchair punters. But hopefully we'll get a few winners uh, out of our uh, pundits. Uh, uh, hopefully we'll get a, a few more winners than we've got pundits in the studio because I'm quite frankly on me Todd. Tonight uh, people have been uh, left, right and centre. Keels has sent himself off down to the south coast in preparation uh, for glorious Goodwood. Tom's at home as he always is and David Stevens will be joining us from one of his many many properties I'm sure and thank you for joining us uh, at home it is live and interactive so get in touch got the chat box in front of me hello to Josh Steve is 99 Genghis 26 Simon Batten Daniel Valentine uh, Devo Cheese and Dave Orton. Uh, as well, who uh, is, uh, is, is at home. Uh, strong goatee game from Dave Orton. So, yeah, good evening to you, uh, Dave. He'll be giving you uh, plenty of action from tomorrow morning, where he'll be joined by Paul Keeley, uh, who uh, is, uh, is in the kitchen uh, down south somewhere. Look at that. He's got, he's got, he's got what you got there. Just check in on that. I'm just looking at what you've got, what you've got on the shopping list. That looks like Lemsip, uh, uh, Instant Coffee and Hovis. I bought a loaf of bread and some marmite right okay uh yeah. that's that's going to keep you through going through the week is it mate uh well if i lose uh, or if i win i still love marmite mate every day okay so are we going to call you the are you the marmite pundit this week then some people love uh, you some people yeah, hate well, you. there's enough people out there that hate me i know that much so yeah why not <laughs> um, we've got the usual uh, fun and games nice little dance with the uh, with your with your favorite weather app keels Oh, well, I didn't need a weather app because I was driving down here this, um, this afternoon and it hammered down all the way. Now, I'm in Bognor, which is a fair way away. Uh, but the um, the guys, uh, they had a media golf day at Goodwood Golf Course today and they said it hammered down with rain all day. So uh, it's a bit surprising that on Goodwood's weather um, page, they're saying they only had about 1.8 millimetres um, since 6am this morning. Can't quite work out how that can be. Given how close Goodwood Course is, I am I have punted, and I am basing everything on the fact there's going to be proper soft ground tomorrow, uh, rather than the good to soft and soft in places. Okay, fair enough. I mean, to be fair, my the last time I went to Glorious Goodwood, it, it I mean, uh, their thermometers certainly don't work because I think pe people were passing out before they let you take your jacket <laughs> off. So I'm not necessarily going on on Goodwood's ability to to tell us what the weather is. <laughs> Uh, absolutely, it's got to be seventy nine and a half or something ridiculous like that, isn't it? Yeah, apparently. You, I think they literally have to. If they've, if they've taken five people away in an ambulance, then you're allowed to to, to get your, get your shirt sleeves rolled up, apparently. But uh, anyway, one person who will have his, uh, his sleeves rolled up into the form book that is is Tom Siegel. Good evening to you. I'm still struggling with those raft of puns we had in your introduction ross <laughs> struggling can you i mean struggling because you you're in awe of of how yeah, creative they were in awe of them d'artagnan yeah this is the, the joy <laughs> the joy of being in the studio on my own mate is that uh, is no one can stop me making terrible jokes i mean not that it not that it changes anything anyway but um are and you Tom, you need to be thick like me because then i just go over your head <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> Fair enough. Or just not listening to a word I say, which I think is pretty much the same thing. Uh, Tom, are you? Uh, are you? Have you got the the going stick out? Are you? Or are you just uh, ignoring the whole chat of weather and and doing your usual and going through the form book and picking the best horse? Yeah, I mean, because we don't know. I mean, Ascot. I think you know. I know Keel's probably had a few quid on Baradar, but it drifted like a barge, didn't it? On from where it was to uh, to when it won the international, because I think people on the day thought that the ground was too quick for him as it turned out it wasn't but 
I just don't think we know what the ground is going to be. If if they're, if they're telling the truth, then it's not going to be too bad. I like Kiel's have based based it on being soft ground, really. But we at, at the moment we don't know. I think in, into Wednesday and Thursday, uh, the more rain is forecast, so I think it will be really soft then. But as at the moment, I just don't know. So I'm not going to, you know, why why factor it in if I get it? Because when you get it wrong, you, you get it spectacularly mm. wrong. So I'm, as you say, I'm just going to try and find the best horse. Okay, lovely stuff. And David Stevens joining us from somewhere. Where are you, Mr. Stevens? Good evening, Ross. Good evening, gents. I'm about a mile away from the course. Uh, it's currently dry, I can report. Uh, sunny day in forecast for tomorrow. So come race time tomorrow. That good to soft that they're calling it now. Hopefully won't be too far away from that. Big week for us, obviously, at Coral. Major sponsors down here this week. The uh, Some big handicaps. The Chesterfield Cup tomorrow carries our name, as do the Golden Mile and the Stewards Cup later in the week. That's always going to be a bit of fun doing the uh, the Stewards Cup draw. Gets James Knight wound up, if nothing else, doing a draw for a big race. So that's well worth it. But we've got not one, but two price boosts to celebrate the opening day of Glorious Goodwood. So let's kick off with those. We've got Kinross uh, having a look. Seven to four, the duration of this live show. That's a maximum of 20 quid. And in the Qatar Goodwood Cup, Courage Mon Ami is out to 11 to four again 20 quid for the duration of this live show. But uh, I must just put in an early explainer that around 6.32, if you come to me, I may not be here because I'll be watching the 6.32 from Foss Lass, where Coral Racing Club horse Aspire to Glory runs in a nursery, first time in a handicap. Alice Haynes has sent him on the long trip from Newmarket to Foss Lass. So 6.32. Let's hope it gets the week off to a winning start. Lovely stuff, David. And on that trip from Newmarket to Foss Lass, uh, was she driving with the handbrake on or off? <laughs> Five and a quarter hours, which apparently is a good journey from Newmarket to Foss Lass. Always trying. I know that's Mark Johnson's slogan. That's the Coral Racing Club slogan as well. Very well. We'll, uh, we'll keep an eye on that then. Uh, but uh, we're going to get stuck into Glorious Goodwood, though, while David uh, uh, starts pouring through Foss Lass form. Uh, and uh, before you, uh, you do, if you want to pour through the form, you want to get involved in the Members Club. Right, let's get stuck into Glorious Goodwood. Then, like I said, at, uh, the last time I looked, 104 runners uh, at uh, Goodwood tomorrow. Uh, and bizarrely, only 14 are in the five furlong uh, handicap, which is uh, a little bit uh, surprising. You uh, normally get plenty of uh, uh, horses lining up for this, but uh, Russell is the 92 favourite for the opener tomorrow. The Coral handicap over five furlongs. Vintage Claret, six to one. Lord of Riddiford, 13 to two. Dream Composer, sevens. Novello, eights. Design and nines. When the dealing's done, is 10 to one. Clarendon House uh, does not go. Uh, other horses to mention. Bedford Flyers coming down to a, a nice Mark Alligator Alley. Mm. Uh, Existence got hood and cheek pieces on and uh, runs this track fairly well as well. So plenty of horses uh, of interest here. But a few things to mention. Lord Riddiford going for a hat-trick in this race uh, alone here. Uh, Russell uh, is, uh, is down into uh, handicap company at this track, of course, after running in group company here uh, last year. Uh, and the same could be said for, uh, for a few others as well, uh, including, uh, where is he? Uh, Acclam Express, of course, who was also in uh, group company at this time last year. But I'm going to come to you first, Tom Siegel. You are the sprint handicap king, uh, but uh, those, those words of warning echoing before the Ascot handicap at the other uh, weekend. Um, Five furlong handicaps at the moment. I mean, I think they're going to do one thing. After a furlong, they've done something completely different. Good luck to you, quite frankly. Correct. I mean, I managed to uh, back a horse at York on Saturday, Ecclesiastical, that must have traded at 1.01 and got beaten by a horse that got out of the stalls too early. Well, that was fun. Uh, so, yeah, I, I have, I, as, you, as you say, I don't really get five furlong sprints. So... Lord Riddiford, two times winner of it, uh, obviously been trained for the race. Not quite sure whether Trap 15 is going to be ideal for him. I think that twi twice he's won. He's won sort of come up the middle. I don't know what the, where they're going to go on the ground. But that would be my worry for him. I thought uh, Dream Composer likes Goodwood. Soft ground, no problem. Vintage yeah. Clarets has improved. And I'm a big when the deal is done fan. I keep backing when the deal is done and he keeps letting me down. But if he goes back to the form of last season at last back end when he when he won here uh when he won when he ran a brilliant race at Doncaster on the wrong side behind fast response uh in really really bad ground he'd have a good chance too so it's not really it's not really my 
cup of tea these races but if i had to choose one it would probably be when the deal is done at the prices yeah he's uh, yeah he's one of those horses isn't he you think oh look, conditions are perfect for him and he, he keeps getting beat keeps coming down the handicap but yeah tong tai cheap pieces and oshin murphy booked is certainly a uh, a sign of intent um over to you for this one uh, keels Russell though i mean nine to two for a, a class two handicap here um, and he's been going off single figures for listed races, group threes and group twos over the past 12 months. Yeah, you can definitely see the case for him, can't you? He's two from three here, and the defeat was a neck uh, was a neck beating in a group two race last year, wasn't it, at the meeting? So you can understand why he's bad. My concern with him is that, well, first of all, he's drawn in stall four. Now, I, I actually think, Tom, that the best place he's going to be is high. If it's soft ground, they always come over to the stand side. The stalls are actually in the centre now, so they're going to have to make a beeline for it. So I think he'd be in the wrong place, Russell, and I think he also doesn't really want soft ground. So there are two marks against him. I think Tom's already mentioned them, but I thought there were two absolute standouts in this race, and they are Lord River Riddiford and When the Deal is Done. Now, Lord Riddiford hasn't just won the two runnings of this. He also won the three-year-old handicap at the meeting uh, five years ago. His first crack at this race, he was fifth of a mark of 92. He won it two years ago off 88 on soft ground when he absolutely bolted up. He won it again off 87 last year. Uh, he's had two runs this season on turf, both poor, but he dropped six pound for him. So he gets in here off 84. He's had a break. He's got the ground to suit. It just looks absolutely perfect. The last time he ran on soft ground, he got beaten a neck by Fast Response when Fast Response was rated 85. Uh, and three weeks later, she was rated 103. So I just think he's got an absolute cracking chance. His entire season will have been have revolved around this race. Uh, and he's almost certainly in the best place to be. But when the deal is, when the deal is done also uh, is very interesting. You can just throw out the last two runs. Didn't like Chester um, two starts ago and he had a headgear switch last time. He's got tongue tie on back with the cheek pieces as well. Ushin Murphy on for the first time. The last time he dropped to a mark of 90, he won easily in a class two handicap at Ascot by three lengths. Um, he's absolutely slung in if Roger Till gets him back to form. So they're the two I've backed. OK, there you go. A couple of strong cases in the five furlong handicap then, uh, David Stevens. It is sponsored by Coral, so you've got to have something up your sleeve, haven't you, for this one? Well, we've got an extra place, four places each way to kick off the meeting. Uh, the two I like, I can see why Razzle's favourite, but he's just about short enough to want to take on. I like Vintage Claret off the back of a third place at Ascot on good to soft ground recently and has to be Lord Riddiford. Just not sure about that 15. I'm probably more on the side of Tom of being sort of a bit cautious about it, but Kills has made a, a really good case why it shouldn't be a problem. So Vintage Clarets and Lord Riddiford for me. But Mick Abelby does have Razzle. And one other, excuse me, I've forgotten which other one he's got in here. Bedford Flyer. I think Mick Appleby will win this opening coral handicap. We are 130 from 11 to 4. OK, there you go. Lovely stuff. Plenty of opinions. Um, uh, most of them uh, are involving not touching this race with a barge pole on the chat because it is a, a pretty tough uh, start to proceedings. And, yeah, I think James Get On It likes Alligator Alley. And that's literally the only opinion in the opener. It is a tough start. Uh, moving on then. Uh, the, uh, they're not. They're not. It's a very different start to your, to your Cheltenhams and your and your Ascots, isn't it? You have a five furlong sprint and a, a two year old six furlong maiden. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a fairly uh, difficult start to the week. Uh, but we've got an eleven to eight favourite for this. Uh, the two fifteen array uh, is the favourite for Andrew Balding and Oshin Murphy. Four to one Union Island. Six to one Dorney Lake. Seventeen to two Alaskan Gold. Uh, for Stellandia. Uh, is a significant number and would have uh, certainly been in with a, a strong chance. 14 to 1 Alanoche, 16 to 1 Mansa Musa, uh, and Robbo, and bigger prices the rest. They're going to come to you first for this uh, one, Tom, because uh, we're going to do for the, uh, the juvenile races. Um, last year's race was an absolute corker, wasn't it? Mischief Magic won, won it, went on into to group company. Four, uh, 14 of the 18 from last year's race have won at least one race to, since, and we've got another big field. Um, on paper, it doesn't necessarily look quite as uh, as strong as, uh, as last year's race, but we've got a, a beautifully bred favourite from a yard whose runners um, tend to improve hugely for one, two, even three runs. Absolutely, yeah. Ray uh, from the family of Franklin, she... Uh... She, 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 yeah. Uh, excellent first run, wasn't it, uh, at Newbury? Third came out and won at Ascot. Fourth was fourth in a listed race afterwards. Clearly got the best form. Question is, with all of these, uh, uh, is she going to handle the ground? We just don't know. Uh, first of all, we don't know what the ground is, really. And secondly, she's by no nay never. And 
the rest of the family preferred faster ground. No, no, never some of them go in soft ground, so that might not be an issue. But the rest of the family like like fast ground. If she handles the ground, I think she'll she'll win. Mark Johnson's Union Island ran well on his day on her debut and will surely go well as, as all the ones from that yard do. But they tend to be better on fast ground. So I think it's about array. If I was trying to uh, sort of look at a newcomer, it would be Charlie Hills is one Robbo. Uh, just because Charlie Hills has got a load of good two year olds this year. And I just thought, you know, he might be he might might be the one to, to throw his, his his hat in the ring. But I think it's all about array really. I think she's got her form has worked out really well. Okay. Yeah, array eleven oh eight. but yeah, no nay never at Joyeuse who <laughs> Does just suggest that uh, he's going to handle conditions. Um, plenty of interesting newcomers. I mean, Richard Hannon had a cracking record in, uh, in this a few years ago, but obviously uh, that was uh, that was quite a while ago now. Uh, but um, Alaskan Gold, I thought, shaped quite nicely. Uh, Keels again. It's a tough race. We're going to have to we're gonna have to blanket bomb the play spot, I think, for this one. But I thought Carl Burke's runner, um, you know, ran into a, a Chrisford, a Stout, Ferguson. You know, really nicely bred expensive, well-owned as well, horses at, uh, at Nottingham. I thought Alaskan Gold ran a bit of a cracker, really. Uh, yeah, it did run very well. I mean, if I was trying to find something to beat Array, um, he was one of those on my list. And the other one would have been having a great time for Richard Hughes. I thought he shaped really well. It probably, it probably wasn't a, a great race at Windsor uh, a couple of weeks ago, but I thought he shaped really nicely. And... His half brother Baron Samady won tons of times on soft ground, so there's every hope that he he will handle the conditions. And I thought he was a fair a fair sort of each way price, but you know this is absolute minimum stakes sort of race for me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, David Stevens, anything uh, tickle your fancy for the second race? Uh, just to come up, having a great time is also a sixteen to one shot there. Um, look, Array's got a load of positives that Tom has, has alluded to. It's just whether you want to be sort of trusting 11 to 8 on this ground. Second in, Union Island does have form on good to soft, but it was at Hamilton last time, given we know the Johnston Yard will target this meeting. If you were desperate to take on the favourite, he'd probably be the one for me. But I mentioned, obviously, the Johnston Yard. Now, Charlie Johnson, of course, uh, the sole licence holder there, always do well at this meeting, or traditionally Dad did, of course. And Charlie Johnson have a winner on this opening day of Goodwood is uh, six to five from 10 to 11. Okay, Charlie Johnson's trainer winner at Goodwood on Tuesday and six to five. Also worth probably mentioning Mansa Musa, uh, who uh, uh, is potentially the, the wealthiest person in history uh, and who was known for his wealth and generosity, uh, much like yourself, David, of course. That's why they call me Mansa Musa down here in that's the local what, pub. That's what, that's what I'm going to be calling you from here on in. Uh, moving on then, uh, with that price boost in mind, Charlie Johnson's a trainer winner at Goodwood on Tuesday, uh, one of his favourite races of the week at the, the Coral Chesterfield Cup. Uh, he's, uh, he's got a, uh, a, a handful of chances, but they're all fairly big prizes here. And uh, Emil Bosk is the 4-1 to favourite for William Haggis uh, and Tom Mark on. Eagles weigh 6-1, to one. Lord Protector 7-1, to one. Pride of America 8-1. to one. Uh, Keys Chorister is 9-1, to one. Haunted Dreams, uh, Haunted Dream is 10-1, to one. Soto Sizzler 11s, Mock to Saab uh, 12s. Uh, Charlie Johnson's got Outbreak in here for, uh, uh, with Andrea Zini in the, at the saddle. Uh, Paradius would have a, a big chance as well, I think, for Alan King. Uh, Ancient Rome for Charlie Hills. Uh, Mahaba the champ for Kevin Ryan as well. Uh, Imperial Fighter's got good course form here. Cadillac, uh, he's a, a funny one, isn't he? Kitsune Power as well has got good course form. So, uh, as ever, uh, Keels, this is always an absolutely wide-open handicap every year. Uh, it looks a fairly strong renewal, I thought, this year. I, there wasn't that many of them. I couldn't make a, a fairly strong case for. Really? Um, really? Did you think the opposite? Did you think it was a weak, weak one? Yeah, I couldn't make a case for 15 of them. I just thought Milbos just wins, doesn't it? <laughs> Fair enough, I guess. I mean, I mean is, if, unless that's, is that your yeah. only case for him? I mean, these horses that I back at big prices never win when I back them at big prices. And I was on him for the John Smith Cup, and he was just miles better than his finishing position at the seventh. He was drawn in 20. They made the decision to drop him out last. He was still last, turning for home. And, you know, I think three of the first four home were pretty much in the first four um, turning for home as well. So he had no chance, but he roared through the field, finished seventh. Ground couldn't get, can't, you know, can't be soft enough for him. He was third in the French Derby two years ago. He's running off 97. He's going to make an absolute mockery of that mark at some point. I think it will be tomorrow. I hope it will be tomorrow. It all depends on how short you want to go in a 16 runner handicap at Goodwood when there can be all sorts of trouble. But if they do come across to the stand side, there will be less trouble. 
So uh, yeah, I, I still think he's worth a bet. I, you, know, uh, you know, four to one's fine, fine, fine by me. He'll yeah. win. Um, yeah, I mean, there was there was three horses that kind of made ground in that John Swiss Cup, wasn't there? There was Scampy, there was Milbosk, and uh, and Spirit. Yeah, none of them, none of them came from anywhere near as far back as he did. <clears throat> well, I was just going to say that the only the, the, the only that was Spirit Dancer who came out and dotted up at York at the at the weekend. So um, interesting to see. Yeah, like I said, it was definitely. Uh, favouring those on the speed. Astro King, I guess, was the other one, wasn't he? But um, uh, he does tend to be ridden that way. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I, Milbos was definitely on the shortlist, Tom. But, I, you know, Lord, that Lord Protector Paradias form looks looks pretty good. Uh, Pride of America, of course, was ahead of Milbos. And people always think, oh, the form's going to get turned around next time out. But it doesn't necessarily work out that way. Haunted Dreams keeps running well. Uh, Keys Chorus has got course form. I thought Moctasav as well looked a, a horse who... This, this looked like being the plan, I think. He's got a really good record at this track. So there's... There's quite a few against the Fab. Yeah, there's a few in there. I'm a bit like Keels. I think if one horse is going to win this by miles, it's going to be Mock to, uh, Mills Bosk, isn't it? I mean, if there's one horse that's got ten pounds in hand, it's definitely him. That's for sure. So, uh, as as Keel says, if uh, you know, four to one might be a very good price. I, I think. I mean, I'm, I've re I've weighed in with him too. I think he'll win. I think Eagles Way is a very interesting horse. I thought he ran really well in the racing league the other night behind Cumulo Nimbus, whatever it's called, uh, Alto Cumulus, one of the clouds anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm worried about Lord Protector on the ground, actually. Mm. Uh, I think I he used to like soft ground, but I kept following him on soft ground and places like Epsom where he's run well before, and he absolutely ran like a drain. Now, it might have been because <clears throat> he wasn't in form at the time, but I think he might like good ground now and quicker ground, so I'd be slightly against him. Pride of America, I, I don't know. I don't know how anyone found him the other day. Didn't give him a prayer in the John Smith's Cup, and he won that. So he'll probably go and win this. Kaya's Chorister just ran appallingly at Pontefract when she was favourite to win a listed race. Don't know what happened there. Haunted Dream could go well. Uh, he ran well in that York race, didn't he? Kept on well, finished in front of Milbos. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him run well. But like you, I thought the danger might be Mokta Saab, who is who likes new uh, likes Goodwood, back on a good mark. Surely been trained for the race by the local trainer, William Knight. But I think it's all about Mill Boss like Keels. I think if he's anywhere near the horse he used to be, he'll win by five lengths. And if he's not, he'll probably win by two. OK, uh, Mill Boss good is then uh, for, for both our pundits at four to one. Um, I did think, I mean, uh, Mock just happened. I, I thought, we were talking about form being turned around. I thought Paradeus would turn form around with Lord Protector. He, does, he will prefer the ground and... It was a bit of a stop-start, slow gallop at Sandown, and, and Holly Doyle went a bit mad around the home bend and, and gunned him to the leaders and paid for it late on. But I think he's quite interesting, and he's got two good pieces of form at the track, so he could be a, a big prize. What price Paradeus, um, uh, David? Paradeus is a 14-to-1 shot, and he's one I like. Well, I like Lord Protector and Paradeus, so I think so you like one, you've got to really like the other. I'm not worried about the ground. I don't think horses really go off liking a particular ground. Um, Mokta Sab, he's no longer a local trainer, uh, William Knight. He, he, he camped from Sussex up to Newmarket. What a foolish man he is. But I think this has been the plan for some while, owned, of course, by Harry Redknapp, a man who's had great sporting success on the South Coast in his time as Portsmouth manager, for those of you that were getting confused. Um, but Milbos, surely, Ross, we're just missing the obvious one. This is one of Kills where he was once again ahead of time. It's a horse he fancied for a previous race. He always gets there eventually with these horses. Yeah, but he's tipped it again, though, and that's that's the thing. He, he he's gone in, he's uh -huh. gone in again. So, uh, Keels, if yeah, it's. it's uh, I did that with Bar I did that with Barrett, I'll be fair. I tipped him in the weekend, having tipped him for the for the Lincoln. So uh, he got the job done. Oh, well, and the uh, tipped him for the Victoria Cup. So they do sometimes follow up for me. So are you saying the curse has been lifted? Um, not necessarily, but this one will win. I don't believe in curses. <laughs> <laughs> Right. You have a night out in Bognor Regis, you will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think curses care whether you believe in them. They, uh, they just crack on with it anyway. <laughs> but uh, uh, As for the others, uh, Genghis 26 says, Eagles way for me. Uh, and Music Mike, strong trend race, he says, has given him nine of the last 14 winners. Uh, qualifies the Lord Protector, Kitsune Power, Mokta Sad Mahar, the champ and Cadillac. Uh, albeit, well, no wonder it had. That's yeah. after field. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know what the du it's probably a six to four Dutch, isn't it? I think for that lot, but uh, anyway, uh, maybe pop them all together in a combination forecast or something like that. But uh, I believe Tom and Keels, uh, you might be in in agreement again. We, we need someone on the producers' desk, as if they didn't have enough to do already. 
uh, to uh, to keep uh, keep track of the stats when you agree. But um, Milbosk, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, it's certainly Milbosk, and England have just won the Test match. If anyone's interested, which Keel certainly isn't. Yeah. Couldn't get it. No. Yeah. You've just spoiled that. Then your feed is obviously well ahead of mine. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. David Stevens always second to the information there. Uh, and <laughs> I'll go with Moctisab and Paradis then. Uh, although the favourite does have a huge chance, as just outlined by uh, our, uh, our panel. Um, moving on then, three twenty-five at uh, at Goodwood is the Vintage Stakes. First of uh, plenty of. Uh, mouth-watering two-year-old braces, and we saw some cracking juvenile performances at the weekend, didn't we? So hopefully we'll we'll see similar uh, over the the course of the week. Uh, starting off with the uh, the vintage, the uh, the Richmond, and the Mole coming to come as well. Uh, Hartum is eleven to four favourite though for Richard Hannon uh, and Sean Levy here. Golden Mind is four to one with Iberium, fifteen to two Mountain Bear, eight to one Thunder Blue, eleven to one Witness Stand, fourteen Soldiers Gold and Spanish Phoenix, uh, and we've also got Sun or Son if you're a, a Spurs fan. Uh, the outsider of the uh, the bunch, uh, and uh, yeah, again, two year old race. So let's come to you first, uh, Tom Siegel, uh, the uh, the favourite Hartum. Since he bolted up at Bath, this horse has been pretty much eye catching on every single one of his runs. And of course, Richard Hannon used to have an absolutely blinding record in this, but that was when Richard Hughes used to waltz his way through the pack and and win on whichever horse from the twenty five top class two year olds they had. They decided to run. So he's certainly a slightly different performer to what they used to win this race with but um, to my eyes it didn't look a particularly strong race in terms of depth and like I said he keeps he keeps getting beaten but he keeps getting beaten with perfectly reasonable excuses yeah yeah absolutely uh, I thought this like you said I didn't think it was a great race and I thought there were doubts about them all on pedigree if uh, apart from the ground apart from some not calling him Son, and we're not having courage, mon ami, in half an hour or whatever as well, Ross. <laughs> Courage, mon ami. Uh, so I, 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 he's the only one I thought like would be would handle the ground on pedigree, Son, but uh, he's not got the form. I thought it was really hard. I thought Golden Mind might be the one uh, by Galileo Gold. So slight doubts about him on the ground, although his brother Perfect Power won a Group One on softish ground. So. Maybe him. I thought he had. The, I thought his run in the uh, Chesham was quite eye-catching, anyway. And the step up to seven. Oh, well, that was seven. But I think he'll finish off the race well. Artem, I am worried about the ground for him. Iberian was pulled out the other day because of soft ground. I think it's going to be softer here. Mountain Bear didn't run very well. Thunder Blue's got a doubt about stepping up in trip. Witness Stand is quite interesting. Didn't come, Tom Clover had a horse run very well after winning a Windsor Maiden behind Royal Scotsman in the Richmond last year. So I thought he might be quite interesting on the sort of, if you're trends inclined. Soldier's Gold is just an improving solid horse who I thought might go well as well, but I think Golden Mind might win it. But that's more by uh, 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 by crossing all the others out rather than thinking he's any great shakes. So not a race for me, really. Thought it was too hard given the doubts about them all on the ground. Yeah, you just remember, yeah, completely. It was Al Karar, wasn't it? It was kind of my, yeah. almost, pretty much my napper the entire week after bolting up at Windsor, ran into Royal Scotsman, uh, ran at Ripon one more, one more time, and has not been seen since. It's, it's funny how you, uh, these, these horses just, sometimes they pop up and you think, this could be a superstar, and then never see him again. Uh, yeah, but, he was very last year, didn't he? I mean, it was a really top run, wasn't it, from his second run, and yeah, just disappointing since. Yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, Tom Clover, I, I haven't quite. I'm just going to look at his record with his two. They're not, it's not been as good this this year, but I think mean, last year and the last couple of seasons before that, that it was an absolutely remarkable record. Every every single one of his juveniles ran to uh, to a decent level every time they made the track. Um, but uh, yeah, Golden Mine four to one. Uh, the Chesham does have a good record in this. Um, three winners from only seven runners from horses coming directly from the Chesham for this. And like you said, Golden Mind was a little bit eye catching. Uh, but uh, yeah. Potentially not the strongest race, uh, Keels, but uh, it's still going to take a fairly decent performance to win it. Yeah, it's very much a non-vintage vintage, isn't it? So, yeah, Hart um, beating six and a half lengths by City of Troy. You'd like to think there was one, at least one horse that could get a bit closer to City of Troy, no matter how good he is. Uh, I just think that this has got up race, upset written all over it, isn't it? Um, I couldn't have Iberian because he came out on ground that 
was quicker than is going to be here last time. That was in the hard end race. And uh, actually, you know, if Tom mentioned Son, if that's the only one you think might handle the ground, why aren't we backing him at 25 to 1? I have. Um, he's got a half brother who won tons of races in Italy on bottomless ground. Yeah. Uh, also won the um, Italian 1000 Guineas, which I know is only a Group 3. Uh, but he wasn't that far behind Artem either. It was only three and a half lengths. And he actually, he lost his place and started to run on again in the last 50, 60 yards. So so I'd give him a chance because I think he will, you know, he will want to test at the trip and he'll get that. And the other one Tom's mentioned as well, Witness Stand. I, I backed him as well. Um, the Chester race that he won probably doesn't amount to too much because they went really, really slow early. But he didn't have quick enough well to win it. Uh, and I just I was just quite impressed. I've no idea whether he'll go on the ground. He certainly didn't have a marked action for soft ground, so uh, there'd be a little bit of a worry. But uh, I, I like Danny Tado, Tado being on him. He obviously um, rode him last time, but he's he's a bit of a go-to jockey for uh, uh, Tom Clover in big races. One on Rogue Millennium for him at Royal Ascot, and is six from fourteen for the yard overall. So those were my two only very small bets because uh, I, I couldn't come up with a real strong fancy but i think you've got to take the front of the market on okay there you go a couple of uh, bigger prices than taking the front of the market on uh heart is that front of the uh, the market or the, uh, the the very tip of the arrow 11 to 4 golden mine is 4 to 1 with uh, iberian and mountain bear 15 to 2 who was quite comfortable beaten at near market but interesting that bally doyle is sending this also for another crack uh, at a, a british uh, group race uh the uh, the vintage stakes a non-vintage vintage then uh, david stevens unless you can uh convince us convince us otherwise well first i can confirm that england have won the test match which just <laughs> happened here so <laughs> the telegram has just arrived Great. so that's and, all good uh, any any idea on uh, the premier league champions from 2022 no, 23 I've... No, but I'm hoping Tom's going to tell me the winner of the 6.32 at Foss last well in advance of me knowing as well. Um, What's the name of the horse, David? I'm watching it as we speak. Aspire to Glory, grandly named. 11 to 1, exchanges 16 to 1. Doesn't look like your confidence is being... Uh, anyway, me. back to this non-vintage vintage stakes. Um, of the ones towards the head of the betting, I like gold and mine. I just thought the Cheshire form probably will work out okay but at a bigger price uh soldiers gold i think is rapidly improving uh shouldn't mind or won't mind good to soft ground uh not got a lot to find with the principles on ratings and the stable won this with galileo gold a few years ago so uh soldiers gold at around 14 to 1 for me okay loads of opinions flying around then in the uh, in the vintage it might not be a vintage race but plenty of uh, angles potentially. Uh, Doc House Riley says it's a nursery cunningly disguised as a group two, which is a bit harsh, but you know, somewhere in between there, I think. Uh, lots of these have got ground concerns, including Golden Mines, says Stevens 99. Uh, it'll be good ground tomorrow, says Off World. Uh, and again, uh, it doesn't seem to be that many, that many opinions on the, uh, the chat. I guess it's probably watching the cricket, it's Monday night. I mean, the, the, the dates is, of Simon Clare off, for sure, and all, plenty of us. Maybe people have forgotten his glorious Goodwood, I don't know. But uh, get your views in for the, the vintage stakes. Uh, Tom, uh, tell us what you'll be, uh, you be backing. Well, Keels has, uh, has uh, quite rightly told me that I should be backing Sun, and I will be now, because he's the one, he's by, he's by too darn hot. Uh, he likes a bit of giving the ground. He's out of a Selkirk mare. He was impressive at Newbury. Uh, I didn't run so badly at things. So at the prices, I'll back him. But I think Golden Mine's the one to beat. OK, well, there you go. And Keels? Yeah, I'll back Sun and Witness Stan, but tiny. Okay. Sam, Keels, Sam. Sam, you don't Son. Have Son. Your, son your son, who is at Cambridge University or wherever it is, is not called a son. Oxford. He's called your son. <laughs> Oxford. <laughs> Oxford. He left there about three years ago. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, I keep forgetting how old we are. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else is 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 pretty sure uh, uh, of how old you are, gents. It's fine. It's okay. Um, so I just kind of drift. It's, it's weird being in the studio because when you t when you two just start chatting on the on the video chat, I just thought I just drifted off for a second. I feel like Keels. It's, it's amazing. It's quite a role reversal. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> you won't believe how many times I've already drifted off throughout this one, mate. Promise you. <laughs> Uh, let's move on then. Seven furlong uh, action for the uh, the next race on the uh, the card as well. The Lennox Stakes here. Uh, uh, Kinross is five to four favourite. Isaac Shelby is three to one. Alsa Hale pulled out uh, uh, because uh, I would imagine because of the ground jump. He's also a non-runner. Uh, Audience is seven to one. Pogo eight to one. Uh, Twelve to one. Marban 
uh, 14 to 1 indestructible and bigger prices the rest here far the uh, the Lennox stakes and Kinross of course uh, he is a in theory a seven furlong specialist although he hasn't actually run over this trip uh, this year but that's more the program book than his fault isn't it uh, he was a winner in this a couple of seasons ago he probably should have been a winner in this uh, last year as well uh, and, uh, and Keels he's one of your and Tom's favourite horses as well. Frankie de Tori is 1 2 1 1 on this horse outside of Group 1 company, and the two was in the race that he should have won last year. Uh, so he's clearly the best horse in this race. But the thing that keeps uh, niggling me the more I look at him is that one box, which in the back of my mind thinks, is he going to have another bit of a nightmare run down that inside rail? Or what's de Tori going to do from that inside box? <laughs> Well, it depends on how soft it is, isn't it? Because it is soft. By, by the way, I'd love to be the guy who said it would be good tomorrow. Can I be his bookmaker, please? No <laughs> chance whatsoever of it being good ground. Um, if they come across it, won't make any difference whatsoever, will it? Um, he is the best horse in the race, I think. And I think the only danger to him is on this ground is probably Isaac Shelby, who's a very good horse himself. But as far as we know, Kim Moss is comfortably the best seven furlong soft ground horse around at the moment in Britain, possibly in Europe. And... And I just think it's going to be very, very, very hard to beat. OK. Um, Isaac Shelby, though, has got, he, he's another one. I mean, there's plenty of horses in here with, with really good seven furlong <laughs> records. I mean, he's three from four. The only race he lost was um, in the, the Dewhurst, of course. And, I mean, again, we could, we could have a debate about how good the three-year-olds are, but he's still been running more than creditably in Group 1 company. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, he's he's the only danger I see because we haven't, we may not have seen the best of him. And he might be, it might be like him was. Uh, seven furlong soft ground might be absolutely bang right for him because he did win uh, the uh, Greenham very, very easily on bad ground, didn't he? That day that Chaldine, um, uh, Frankie fell off Chaldine. So uh, yeah, um, he's um, you know he, he's the danger, but I mean he's still got to find a bit, I think, for uh, for for. To beat Kim Ross. Okay. Kim Ross 5 4, then Isaac Shelby 3 to 1. Quick cut to David Stevens, uh, whose facial expression was tell us how that Foss last race unfolded. Well, it's still going here on my it's incredibly. Fun, it's, it's finished ages ago, about three minutes <laughs> ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, unfortunately, Aspire to Glory hasn't. That's what he's waiting for. <laughs> no, Aspire to Glory is going to finish in about two minutes further on. David, are, are, you, what, are you watching on teletext here? What is. What are you, <laughs> This is the countryside, you've got to remember. There's no fancy technology down here. Right, OK, what? So people are acting it out, are they in front of you? Or you did it, uh, did, did exactly. It, the cables are slower. OK, fair enough. Um, the Lennox stakes then, uh, Tom. Um, Kinross 5-4, Isaac Shelby 3-1. But like I said, yeah, plenty of seven furlong horses. Um, audience came of age last time out. Marban's got course form, of course. Um, I was tempted to back... Holguin each way in this as well. He, he seemed to really come of age last time out. And, of course, the Yard won it with Sandrine last year. And Holguin's a better horse than Sandrine, at least on ratings. And there, are, there answers my question, Ross, because I think Isaac Shelby's miles better than Sandrine. And that makes me think that he's the bet tomorrow because I think the time of his, of his Newbury race was off the charts good when he won the, won the Green. And he hasn't run badly at all. He's got the closest to winning a three-year-old Group 1 in France of any British or Irish trained horse this season. He was just collared on the line over a mile. I don't think he really stays a mile. And then he went too far too keen in the St. James's Palace and still wasn't beaten too far. I think he's got a really good chance of turning over Kinross tomorrow because I think conditions are perfect for him. My worry about Kinross is I just don't think he's in very good form. I know he was third in the uh, July Cup, but I thought that was one of the worst July Cups in the history of July Cups. And I just didn't think he, I just didn't think the turbo kicked in. Mm. When Kinross is in form, he comes off the bridle and, he, and the turbo kicks in. Now, it might be ground-related. Keels could be right. Maybe he'll completely uh, bounce back to form on the soft ground tomorrow because that is what he really, really likes. But he was beaten by Sandrine last year, only a short head above Pogo. I know he should have won. But the, the year before, he just scraped home by an egg. I'm not convinced Goodwood is, is really his cup of tea. I know he's got good form there, but I think he's got better form at other places. Ascot, Longchamp, York. Uh, for example, which are flatter tracks. So I think he can be beaten tomorrow, and I think Isaac Shelby's the one to do it. I don't really fancy audience. Pogo, I think, would prefer better ground. Indestructible is not without a chance because he was he ran very well in this St. James's Palace. He wasn't far behind uh, Isaac Shelby that day, and he's, he's like five times the price. But I really think 
on, on, on this ground, if it is soft, Isaac Shelby's got a very good chance back at seven furlongs of turning over the favourite. Isaac Shelby then, yeah, a, uh, a three to one shot here. I guess that, yeah, I, I kind of know what you mean about Kim Ross. I mean, age catches up with all, right, Tom? Especially especially top class racehorses. And Kim Ross has been on the go since the back end of his two year old season. Um, so there is that in the back of my mind that maybe he's, he's just going to meet younger legs that are on the up and he's slightly on the down. Um, but there is, I guess, the, the, the other contrast is, is he not just a bit I think of a he back... improves as the se- I think he improves as the season goes on, though. Oh, well, that's exactly what I was going to say, Kiels. That's, the, that's the, the counterpoint to that. He's only ever won once before August. Um, and he just, it, it does seem to be that his entire season is geared up to, to August to October, doesn't it? Exactly, yeah. That's, that, that's what I think, anyway, yeah. That's what I'm hoping. But, I mean, I, you know, he's he a 5-4, to four, but I'm not, I'm not going to go he, smash him. He pounced below form last year, I thought, in this race. You know, yeah, but he didn't get a break, did he? Well, he yeah, should have won. I mean, he should he should have won comfortably. I mean, he's, he's a proper Group One horse, isn't he? And he got beat by Sandrine and Pogo, who no one would describe them as Group One horses. So, uh, if, for me, if he's if he's if he's in the form he showed in the foray and at the, on Champion Sprint Day, then he's he's a four or seven shot to win hmm. you know, because he's he's one of the best seven furlong horses in the world. But I'm not convinced he is at the moment, and so I'm quite prepared if the ground is soft to give Isaac Shirley a whirl against him. OK. Um, in the chat, uh, Henry Futter says, Kinross hangs left all day, Shelby to swoop. Uh, Holguin each way if soft, says uh, Robert. Yeah, like I said, I do, I do think he's going to outrun his odds, Holguin. He's, he's kept fairly warm company, and um, I quite like the way he went about it at chess last time. I, I thought he was going to... I'm uh, going to dodge it a bit, and then he pulled even further clear. Um, uh, as for the, the rest, uh, Isaac Shelby will win on that ground, says Vortex uh, Fitness. Uh, Isaac with the mud, says James, get on it as well. Uh, what is Tune 2020 HWTL? Uh, it rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Uh, Kinross, banker of the meeting, he says. Uh, David Stevens, uh, is Kinross just gearing up, or is he not quite as good as he was? Which side of the fence are you on? I'm right on the middle of the fence. I just don't know if he's as good as he was. If he is, then seven furlong soft ground is clearly right up the street. At five to four, he's short enough for me to leave alone. I'm not convinced how good the majority of the three-year-old Colts are, particularly on this side of the channel. Uh, so I'd leave Isaac Shabby alone. And the one i take a chance on, and you are taking a chance because he's never run on ground as soft as we think it's going to be this morning, but his audience, he's been gouded. He's won two from two, stepped up to win the group three uh, criterion at Newmarket last time. I just think there might be more improvement to come from him. As I said, I don't think this is it's a bit of a theme. I don't think it's a vintage Lennox. And I would just take a chance on audience. But sadly, we do only have two places each way with the non-runners now. OK, fair enough. There you go. The, the Lennox stakes there. Plenty of opinions flying around for that. Let's see what people make uh, of the, uh, the Goodwood Cup, shall we? Uh, where, uh, again, we have uh, Royal Ascot form on the table in the shape of uh, a courage mon ami. I believe uh, is the correct pronunciation. Uh, two to one. Coltrane is 100 to 30. Emily Dickinson is five to one. Eldar Elderov is 17 to two. Uh, Gia Valletto uh, is 12 to one. Lone Eagle 14s. Quickthorn 14s. Broom is 16 to one. Uh, and we've got Tashka. Uh, Ocean Wind. Uh, welcome back, uh, Ocean Wind, uh, this season. Uh, an enemy at the outside or of the the bunch here for the the Goodwood Cup. Uh, with courage, mon ami, a courage, mon ami, uh, ton sigel. Uh, he's, uh, <laughs> I can't stop doing it now. He's going for a five-timer. Now, after that, uh, that Ascot run, uh, obviously got course form as well, was wildly impressive uh, in that, uh, that Goodwood handicap uh, before that. But again, big question for him is that He's unproven on the ground, and a lot of his rivals will absolutely love it if it's soft. So if it does get pretty testing by the 435, it's going to be um, it's going to be a fascinating test of this horse's potential on completely different conditions. Absolutely, absolutely. One thing I would say is that uh, at the start of the week or last week, Gregory was going to run, and Courage Monami wasn't going to run, but they switched it around because they thought Gregory wouldn't like the ground, and Courage Monami might. So for me, while I, obviously, being a punter, I've got to take him on because he's never run on the conditions. It seems to me that John Gosden thinks he'll be fine on it uh, and he would know the horse inside and out. So, But at two to one, I've got to take him on. Coltrane is just Coltrane. He's going to run a really good race. Won't mind the soft ground. But I think I think the Ascot race, I think there's three from the Ascot race that have a chance of, of turning the form around, really. Emily Dickinson is obviously one because she has conditions absolutely as she'd love them. Uh, two miles soft ground is what she likes. Just not convinced how classy she really is. 
which is up against two horses, I think, with better form. Elder Elderov won the St. Ledger last year, a classic. Now, it wasn't a brilliant classic, but it was pretty good. It was pretty good. She beat some, he, she beat, he beat some really good horses. I just don't think so. There was something up with a couple of the Varian horses at Royal Ascot. He was a big drifter, and it seemed like everyone knew he wasn't going to win. He could bounce back. But I like Lone Eagle. I really do. I think he's going to run really well for Rafe Beckett. Uh, I think he's got the single best piece of form in the race. His second in the Irish Derby to Hurricane Lane when he was caught on the line. He's two from three at Goodwood. He loves soft ground. Two starts ago, he gave Hamish in a real good race in real bad ground at Chester. Last time, he cantered along. He was too keen in the in the Ascot Gold Cup, but he breezed past Subjectivist and went to the front two furlongs out, only to not get home because of what he'd done before. I think two miles on soft ground at Goodwood are is just you couldn't make up better conditions for Lone Eagle, in my in my opinion. And I think he's going to outrun his odds. I really do. I think he's I think he's got a chance because I think I just think everything's right. He beat your peer here by five lengths in the cop tap one year. I just think he's going to run really well. I think conditions are ideal, and we don't know that for Corrige and me, and we don't know. And I think he's just a better horse than Emily Dickinson. I just think he's got more ability. And Coltrane. If you ask Coltrane, finish second in an Irish derby, I don't think there's any chance in the world anyone would think Coltrane can finish second in an Irish derby. Lone Eagle did. I think he's going to run really well. He'd be my selection at 14 to 1. Fair enough, Tom. I mean, I would have. There was 104 horses running tomorrow. I'd have got a long way down that list before thinking someone was going to be tipping Lone Eagle. Not that I, you know, it's, 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 it's an absolutely great case. It was just a. I, I love it. It's coming out of nowhere. Um, so 14 to 1, Lone Eagle. Uh, Keels, I'm I'm flabbergasted. Have you got a uh, have you got I'm certainly, not, I'm certainly not flabbergasted. I was quite tempted by. I managed to convince myself that he isn't going to stay. That was the only thing, and he you know, and he might well do so. But I just put off him by that. I I'm more of an Emily Dickinson fan. I think she's got a great chance of turning the form around. Uh, she just loves you know. I mean, the softer he is, the better her chance. Obviously, the last three times she's run on soft or heavy ground, she has. Um, one by an hour at 13 and a half lengths. It was just hands and heels last time in the uh, uh, in the car cup. I know it's only a group two, but she flew home having, you know, they ignored the pacemaker last year uh, in the Lily Langtree. She absolutely flew home and ground that was too fast for her. I think she's going to absolutely love it uh, here tomorrow. I thought Tashkan had half a chance uh, at a price, um, but he, has, he does seem to have halved in price. Uh, recently, he's got some really good back form on, on soft ground, including being second to Truchan uh, and um, in the Champions Long Distance Cup a couple of years ago. So he'd interest me in a price. I certainly think it's a bit more open um, than the betting suggests. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I do agree with you. Yeah. And like I said, it's not it's not necessarily. I don't know. It's a funny one, is it? Because like I said, quite a few of these Giovaletto's got you know got the, the beating of a couple of these on bits and pieces of form. Yeah, and it is just that it is just that ground concern. They, they, they've chosen Cornish one of me apart from uh, aside from uh, Gregory uh, David to to run here, but it is still an experiment uh, because uh, unless of course the the sun comes out tomorrow morning and we all look like mugs and it it's good good to firm in places by the time it gets to four thirty five. But uh, given the given the way the uh, the weather's going at the moment, I wouldn't entirely put it. Uh, Put it past the, the heavens to, uh, to do that. No, I should be getting Tuesday's weather forecast on about Wednesday down here, so I'll keep <laughs> you informed on that. Um, I, we, we sort of said some of the races aren't that deep in quality. I think this Qatar Gubal Cup is not, you know, just, we, we cannot accuse it of that. I think it's a really deep Gubal Cup. You've got the likes of Gio Valletta that have been saved for this race rather than going to Ascot. Look, if Courage, mon ami, um, and it is Courage, mon ami, mon ami Tom, um, no. He's going to take a look. <laughs> <laughs> it's just French, not. mon ami. Come on. Anyway, it's, forget come that. Come on, David. As uh, Tom will it, tell you, Bre it, Brexit means Brexit, mate. It's courage, <laughs> mon ami. Oh, it does down in this part of the world. <laughs> anyway, um, I've lost my train of thought. If he goes on this ground, he will take the world of beating. Coltrane will finish second to someone. He's a brilliant horse owned by good friends of mine. But he just in these top, top races finds one too good. Uh, I like Emily Dickinson. I get the sense there's a little bit of stable confidence coming as well about her. Obviously, the softer the ground, the better for her. I think two and a half miles on good to firm ground in the Ascot Gold Cup was not her thing. Um, and one at a massive price. And you've got to go back to for some real couple of years for some back form, ocean wind. But he will love it. I'm trying to see what price he is, around 40 to 1. The softer, the better. If it came up really heavy, 
Uh, he'll be staying on when some of these have them. But Emily Dickens would be my main one here. Written, of course, by Ryan Moore. Ryan, a select book of rides tomorrow. So quality over quantity. And Ryan Moore to ride a winner on the opening day of Goodwood uh, is 7 to 4 from 11 to 8. And Frankie Dottori, who rides our favourite here, he is 100 to 30 from 11 to 4 to ride two winners on the opening day of Goodwood. Okay. A couple of, well, the most, the two most popular jockeys amongst punters there. Yeah. Albeit um, last year's good one was all about William Buick, wasn't it? So uh, he rode out of his skin all week. But um, uh, if you do want an angle as well, David, uh, I, I was still, you know, I moved house a few months ago. We still got a couple of boxes we were unpacking, and one of you know, the ones specifically full of all the books that we should probably give away or take to the, uh, the charity shop. And uh, I unpacked one yesterday, and right on the top was the complete works of Emily Dickinson. Uh, I must say, my girlfriend's not mine. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> not read it, but I, I remember as I was leaving the house this morning, you know, that was in my head, and then there she is. So look, um, form-wise, she's got a chance. But it, finding a book as you're unpacking a um, unpacking a box is that is that a good angle, Tom? I don't know. You tell me. Better than some of the ones you come up with, Ross. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask the producers to just clip that. A few seconds there, and uh, and I'm just going to play that repeatedly. Uh, the Goodwood Cup, Tom the Seagull goes to? Uh, Lone Eagle. I think he's got a good chance. OK, Seagull with Lone Eagle. Uh, Keels? Uh, yeah, Emily Dickinson for me. Emily Dickinson. And your favourite poem by Emily Dickinson, Keels? Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> and David? Told I you can't I'm pick. Sick. I can't pick. I love all her work. She was just brilliant. Uh, Emily Dickinson for me too. <laughs> Lovely stuff. There you go. OK. Uh, two more races of Glorious Goodwood Day 1 then. Uh, and uh, we have a, a Phillies handicap, the Coral Phillies handicap, to be specific, over the mile. Stormy C is uh, one of those select rides of Ryan Moore with Sir Michael Stout uh, training this uh, uh, filly on her uh, uh, handicap debut here. 4-1. to one. Uh, Roe A is 5-1. to one. Nova 7-1. Good Gracious is 8-1. to one. Bridestones 8-1. to one. Uh, Baxi Dar 17-2. to two. Espresso is 10-1. to 11-1 to one Royal Dress and bigger prices the rest. Uh, loads of horses come in into this in good, uh, good Nick was injury for Tom Clover was a winner last time out. Uh, Zuzana went off uh, too quick at Yarmouth last time out and is a little bit interesting. Bellhaven for Harry Eustace has got some uh, useful form here uh, at Keels. Um, but there was a couple of horses on my list. One was Baxi Dar, who uh, had me absolute taters on at Sandown when we were there on Eclipse Day, and she had an absolute nightmare run. I think she could have possibly won that race with a clear run. Uh, the other one was Good Gracious, but we know about the mile at Goodwood, and I had a look. Uh, the past 23 years, with, uh, with 16 runners or more, not a single winner uh, from 17 or higher. So that's going to be pretty tough for Good Gracious. It's going to be pretty tough for her away as well. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, I suppose it depends on whether they do come uh, sort of stand side as I'm, I'm expecting them to. But even so, that 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 first bend is pretty close up, isn't it? Uh, at a mile, and it, it does it does cost them ground, uh, and that is the problem. And we got Bridestones is in twenty as well. So yes, I was with you at Sandown. I liked Baxi Dar. Uh, I have backed her. She seems to have halved in price in the last. Uh, I don't know how long, but I can see why. Um, sixth last time, but it was still a career best on RPRs. And like you said, she was denied a run so many times. She was only beaten two lengths. That was in a listed race. Uh, and obviously she's coming back down in class to, to class three handicap company. I, I, you know, I found it hard to believe that she was a double figure price. So yeah, I, I, I do quite like her. Obviously she's got to handle what could be pretty soft ground, but I think there's a chance she will. Uh, and yeah, she was the one for me. Yeah, she's uh, yeah, she's 17 to two. Like you said, yeah, I couldn't quite believe the the double figure uh, double figure odds for uh, for her, but she has been uh, well back. What about you, Tom? What did you think of this? Uh, I like Novus most. Uh, I thought she ran well at Sandown. Uh, on Coral Eclipse, eh? Better ma better make that known. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I thought she, I thought she ran really well that day. The ground would have been too quick. I think she wants soft ground. She's a winner at the course. Uh, wide draw. I think they'll come up the middle. Tomorrow, I think at the first, and uh, uh, tends to happen at this uh, meeting first day with the with the rail out. They sort of win up the middle of the track often at Goodwood. So I'm not so worried about the draw, and I think Good Gracious is very dangerous because she she was incredibly impressive at uh, Ascot last time, first time on soft ground, first time in blinkers. And William Haggis has this remarkable record of having horses that just sort of are like incredibly good on soft ground. Adair, Baldari. You know, all these sort of horses. I'm hoping Milbosch 
is Mill, whatever it's called, is another one in the opening race. And I, I just think she might be another one who might leave her four miles behind. So I like Nova, some good gracious. Black Sea Dar, hope it wins for you boys. Yeah, no, I don't. I, well, I, re I really fancy good gracious, but again, that, that draw's really put me off. But yeah, she, she's got a cracking pedigree as well. And half brother went, went from 64 to 89 as a three year old. The Dan went from 88 to 100 as a three year old. And like you said, I thought she just kept. She, when I watched that Ascot race back, I was expecting horses to almost close on her, but she kept going, didn't she? She just kept going and going and going. If she even had a slightly better draw, I, but I don't know. It's um, stats there to be broken and everything, but it is pretty tricky over that mile, Tom. Yeah, forget it. You know, it just kills you, doesn't it? It kills yeah. you. If you're good gracious, back it. All right. Well, I will. I will then. I'm going to back back. I'm going to back back Cedar, and I'm going to back Good Gracious as well. What, go. what about you'll you, be, David? You'll be very pleased with me tomorrow. I will. And uh, to celebrate, I've uh, I've kicked over an entire <laughs> litre of water in the studio, so it's a good look. Good job, no one's here. Anyway, David, before uh, before everything uh, sets on fire and electrocute myself, tell us what you think of this penultimate race. I think you've got to be drawn lower than 10, haven't you? Mile at Goodwood, Bigfield. I mean, Roea, for example, drawn 18. She was taken out at Newbury last time because of soft ground. Be a doubt about her, even if she does run. Uh, I did a Goodwood preview last week. Actually, Hayley Moore was on the panel with us. She put up Novus as her dad's best chance of the week. But again, drawn 15 just puts me off. So I have gone for the Hannon, Billy. Uh, Royal Dress, drawn nine, one on heavy ground at Haydock. So obviously won't mind. How soft it gets. That was seven furlongs, but stepping up another furlong will hopefully not be an issue. Around 11 to 1. And we are five places each way in this Coral Phillies handicap. Lovely stuff. Thanks, David. Uh, if you are watching, by the way, uh, whether it's live or uh, on the pre-record, make sure you uh, like the stream. Uh, come on, feed that algorithm. Come on, give it to the algorithm. Uh, and uh, because without that, you know, quite frankly, it's just four blokes all sat in different places chatting to themselves, isn't it? <laughs> Um, so uh, let's close off the Goodwood card on day one uh, with the 5.35. Uh, still a, a pretty tough end to proceedings. 13 of them run at farthest naught to 95 at six furlong Phillies sprint. Kitai, very impressive at Ponty last time out, 2 to 1. Funny story, 11 to 2. Candler Hope, 15 to 2. Executive decision, 17 to 2. Crazy look, 10 to 1. And bigger the rest. Tom, I'm going to come to you first again because, just because, it's one of those Johnston horses that when they look incredibly impressive, when they win, they look like absolute world beaters and Kitai looked looked like a listed slash group filly last time out um, but she did get the dream run down the inside at Pontefract and that's my only concern but yeah when these Johnson horses get things right my god they bolt up yeah absolutely and the thing about her which is unlike many Johnson horses she loves soft ground didn't she she won at Carlisle was it the time before uh, on soft ground uh, she looked very good as you say at Pontefract uh, two to one though is plenty short enough isn't it it's quite a, you know, it's a glorious Goodwood race at the end of the day, and there's a few in there that have got a good chance. But I do think it's is the one to beat. I thought at a very big price, um, the Hannon horse Mini Tonka might run quite well. She's by Kingman, and quite a few of them like soft ground. And I think she's been, they've always thought a bit of her. She's always run in group races. She's never delivered. But I think one day things are going to fall right for her. And I think her at a big price, uh, could she could run really well. But I think Kitai is probably the one to beat. Yeah, and that, uh, that horse that beat Minnetonka last time, that star guest looks a bit of a monster as well. Uh, so, uh, yeah, interesting Minnetonka down in grade the last couple of starts. What about you, Keels? Uh, yeah, another class dropper for me. I really like uh, Bonnie Angel. I just thought it was very, very interesting. First time out this season, Bath listed race, uh, beating three and a half lengths, but did really well from where she was because she was on the inside. The action were, was all on the outside, and it was five furlongs, which is, no, which is nowhere near far enough. Bit too keen last time, but uh, uh, this was in May. She was she was fifth of eight, beating six and a half lengths. But I think, but um, once she was too keen, too, it was an incredibly good race. She was getting only a pound at the time from the winner, who was Shaquille, who's won a Commonwealth Cup, Commonwealth uh, Cup and a July Cup since. The runner-up, Washington Heights, has been second, second, fourth, and three really valuable sprinting handicaps the third one next time and you know Shaquille was responsible for half the winning distance I thought she ran perfectly well uh and you know she's dropped two pound for it and she's you know she, that was a class two against Colt she's dropping back back in class and against her own sex I I just thought she she's got to have a real good chance again she's drawn 12 so right next to them you know one of the closest ones to the rail if it does turn out you want to be on the stand side Richard Kings go on for the first time. He's five from 17, I think it is, for Clive Cox this year. Seven other top four places. 
I thought it just all, all amounted to a good each way bet. Okay, Bonnie Angel then, 10 to 1. A good uh, good case made there for uh, Keels, who uh, has just told me, by the way, uh, people saying, yeah, do like the stream. And if it does get 250 likes, the first one this week, Keels will eat an entire jar of Marmite live on air. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> David Stevens closes out with this final race. Uh, Kitai, obviously, very strong claims um, and Deserves to be favourite. I would take a chance on the horse drawn in 13. Uh, Sophia Starlight Grand Tour actually runs a couple in this race. So uh, he's generally been in good form this season, this filly. Um, and I say I'm hoping that, uh, yeah, can nab the rail from 13 and make the best of our way home. Lovely stuff. Right. Uh, we'll get the naps in a second then on day one of Glorious Goodwood after this. To that competition then to uh, to win a trip to the Breeders' Cup, but it's all about the Goodwood Cup uh, tomorrow, day one of Glorious Goodwood. What are the naps then, starting off with Tom Siegel? Uh, I'm going to hope that the draw boys have got it all wrong and suggest good gracious in that in that Phillies handicap at thing. A move swiftly won it for William Haggis from a wide draw a couple of years ago. I think good gracious is very well handicapped. Okay, uh, good gracious it is then. Paul Keeley? Yeah, let's play it safe day one. I think Mill Bosk in the 250 is going to make a mockery of his mark. OK, Mill Bosk it is. Uh, David Stevens. Uh, Union Island in the maiden, the second race on the card for me. Oh, yeah, wasn't expecting that. But, uh, and I'll go for, with uh, without the good gracious market, backseat R. No, well, let's back both of them. Let's go good gracious and backseat R. That's my, that's my, my nap is that one of those two will win, Tom. Uh, you've... you've You've talked me in, and uh, quite frankly, it's your fault if the draw does for, for good gracious. Is that is that agreed? Good, and I'm expecting to see Baxi Dar get hampered 77 times. <laughs> That's good one, mate. That's good wood. So we've got plenty of that to come this week. But uh, we'll be here every night, so uh, stick around for that. Uh, uh, like, subscribe. Have a good evening. See you tomorrow. <laughs>